guys, welcome back. As promised, with an adult content warning, i.e. me with no makeup on, how to lighten up your makeup for summer. And yes, at the moment we're sort of sitting at around 72, 73 degrees, but we're only in the middle of June. And I just know that that hot weather is gonna come back in July and August. And you're all going to be asking me how to lighten up my makeup following last week's video, which was how to lighten up your skincare for summer. Now my face is, actually I did have to go down the road and get some batteries earlier on. So my face is still a little bit tacky, um, to film by the way. Um, but it's had, at the moment, vitamin C, hyaluronic acid, and an SPF on it. I don't have any moisturizer on today. I literally just have a, um, what did I put on this morning? I put on C for Ulic, you'll not be surprised to hear. I then put on the La Roche-Posay de Malergio, and then I put on the Garnier SPF 50. It used to be called Sensitive Ultralight, and it's now called Anti-Pigmentation. Same product, different packaging. So what I've got is I've got sort of, fairly okay happy skin and I thought, stopped putting my skincare on probably about 15 minutes ago so where do we start right I would suggest you start with something super light either a CC or a BB cream uh, the CC cream from Arborium and from somebody like Trini is clear goes on clear the original technology obviously was um, um, Estee Lauder um, and they had a day wear and it goes on clear and then it bursts on your skin to give you pigment. I like a little bit more coverage, but only because I'm older. And if you look at my skin really close up and heaven forbid, any of you out there watching this with on widescreen TVs, because I know some of you do just go onto like YouTube on your widescreen TV and you see this fizzog, this mush in widescreen, I can only apologize. But obviously as I'm older, what I've got is I've got broken capillaries from years of having really bad hay fever. I've got a little bit of pigmentation here that I'm desperate to zap away. And I've got some little sort of pigmentation marks here left over. And you know, I put some pictures up on Instagram the other day. In the 70s and 80s, we probably used to wear Ombre Solaire Factor 2 oil. So I'm lucky to get away with the skin I've got. And obviously I need to cover under my eyes as well. Now the, the, the concealer I'm absolutely loving at the moment. And yes, I do have an Herborium code and I can put it on here. And this was part of a paid partnership and I'm not being paid to post this. Are the um, BB crayons. I absolutely love them. And I think it's because they're idiot proof and I am the idiot. And I've got two shades here. I've got a lighter one and I've got a mirror here. So I'm just gonna move to one side that I put around my eyes. And what that's what I love about them. You can put them exactly where you need them. That's the only place I need my concealer. I don't need it here because I'm slightly puffy and wrinkly here. And a concealer will only make that worse. It literally just needs to go in that dark shadow there. A little bit of a, it's not a broken capillary, but an enlarged capillary there. That is Claire, which I think is the lightest shade they do. And it's good for around the eyes because it's very light reflective. And then I use my classic Doré um, for anywhere that I need to cover redness. It's a slightly yellow tone and it's actually the colour of my base as well, my foundation. And obviously I go round there, top of my nose, and I do a little bit on my chin there. And that's to counteract redness as much as anything else. And then, on this area here, this little bit of pigmentation here, I go in super hardcore and I do a, use a concealer pen. And this is Roller Eye Bright Pencil from Benefit. But I actually use it on my skin and it's super lightweight. And I just go in there on that little bit of pigmentation because I hate it and I need to have it zapped off. Look at this attractive picture. How lovely is that? They're all super lightweight. They're all really easy to blend out. And then I go in with my, as you can see, used to the very last drop, BB creme from Aborium and I'm Dor, Doré, Dor, Dor in English, Doré in French. Um, and I've got hardly any left and I've been using this. Do you ever wonder how to get things to the bottom? Like this is a, what is this? This is a Loxitam one. And it's one of those really clever little sort of, and you keys and you twist them. And you can't actually twist this because it's plastic. It's made for metal packaging, like toothpaste packaging. But I still use it to squeeze it up. So I do that with it. Um, and it does get every last drop out. And then let's do my foundation. It's super lightweight. I love this foundation. And I call it a foundation, but in reality, it's actually, a super light, almost tinted moisturizer. I put quite a lot more brush there, but it'll go a long way, I promise. And see then what happens with the concealer is the concealer essentially just blends out. 
really quickly, really easily down onto your neck. This one's actually got an SPF and I know I've just put an SPF 50 on, but this one's got an SPF, I think this one's a 20. Yeah, it's got, I think once your SPF has gone in, then you can go in with makeup and it actually sits on the surface, it doesn't dilute it. So don't worry about diluting your SPF 50 with a foundation. And you see, it's just my skin on its best day. Doesn't particularly completely mask those bits of pigmentation, but you wouldn't have noticed them otherwise, would you? And then I go in, this by the way is my It Cosmetics dual ended brush. And I go in, I pick up a little bit more foundation and then I go in around my eyes, blending that concealer out with the foundation or with the BB cream, I should say. And what that does is it keeps the brightness where you need it. It's a bristle from my brush, but doesn't really sit in wrinkles. And then on the other eye, and I do take my foundation or my BB cream or my CC cream right over my eyelids. And that's how I prep my eyelids um, for makeup. And my makeup stays all day and it doesn't really crease. And then I'm going to show you an extra little key that I also do. So there you go, base done. And you see how using your concealer like that means you blend out your concealer really easily, but essentially what it does is it just adds a, a depth of coverage and tone to your foundation. So I've got a yellowy bit around my nose, so I've got redness and a brighter shade around my eyes, but no concealer here, just in that dark dented shadow area there. That's the secret of it not sitting in too many fine lines because we all have them when we get to a certain age. Then what I do straight away is I set my foundation in an area where I want it to be matte, not, which in other words means not all over. Then I go in with my Beauty Pie One Powder Wonder, without a doubt for me the best pressed translucent powder, huge Elizabeth Arden really old brush. I go in, tap it out, and then I literally just do my chin, because I want that to be matte, my nose, because I want that to be matte, and I want that concealer to stay in place. And it's hay fever season, so I'm continually wiping my nose. Just up in that little bit there. And then I go in on my eyes. And I go in on my eyes. I go in on my eyes not only to set my foundation, but also to make those areas matte. And I want them to be matte because I want to knock back any undulations in my face. If you highlight something and you make it glossy, you will highlight the undulations. So that's hence the fact people do here and here. That's lovely. But if you've got a problematic under eye like I have, i.e. a dent here, a raised area here, a dent area here and a raised area here, you want it to be flat. You want to hide that. And the way to do that is to knock it back and make it matte. That also, accidentally, on purpose, creates a base for eyeshadow as well. Now, see how little foundation I've actually used. I've only used half of that. It, a little goes a really long way. I mean, if I was going to be, I mean, and I am going out after this, I would actually take it down onto my chest slightly, not only because I have some colour imperfections on there, which I need to get sorted out with a laser, but also I think it adds an extra layer of mineral sunscreen protection and blends it all in as well. There you go, use that up as well. Now, blushes. I did a live on Instagram with a lady called Sasha, who's the head makeup artist at Code Aid. Um, and she was teaching me some techniques about applying a uh, blusher. And it's all very interesting because I also did one with Dom, who is the makeup artist on Glow Up, on BBC's Glow Up. And they both taught me a, a very interesting trick. And they taught me one thing and one thing most importantly, and that is, for me, my colour of a blush that suits me because I have a yellow undertone to my skin is a sort of peachy, bronzy colour. But rather than use my normal MAC Peach blush, which uh, Dom introduced to me, I'm going to use the Code 8 one, which I really love, but I'm going to use it. It's, Sasha showed me two ways of using it uh, to uh, contour, blush and highlight, but I'm going to use it the other way that she told me to use it, which is just to swirl up. And this is Code A Blush Palette Rosé. So basically, swirl it around, tap it off. The key is the tap, obviously. And then the secret is to go not here, and splodge it in the middle, but to go down, super light touch, and onto the cheekbone, and then flick it up into the hairline, down and onto the cheekbone. There you go, super easy. So 
So that's the secret is there. Don't put it there too far forward on the face because it narrows the face. Don't put it below the earlobe, but I do like it up into the hairline a la 80s. It's very slightly 80s. If you don't like it, you don't need to do it. Very Studio 54, 70s, 80s. Anyway, and the other side, so again, not starting here and going back, but starting slightly further back and coming inwards. And it means you get the vast majority of the colour where you need it here rather than at the centre of the face. Such a nice colour, it really is. There you go. Base done. Takes two seconds, it really does. Now, next I would go in and do my eyebrows and this is such a mess. I need to take the sticky label mark off this. But I went into Superdrug and I purchased this the other day because it's the third one I've now purchased and I, I love it. It's without a doubt my favorite tinted brow gel and it is L'Oreal Plump and Set and I it was the last one they had and I am brunette in it and I quite like that. And why I like it is because it's got a tiny spoolie that's slightly angled. It's got a little bit of fi fiber in, a lot of holding power and the right amount of tint and I love it. And I like my eyebrows to be exactly the same color they are which is obviously browner darker than my hair obviously and then i go in and up i absolutely love this product and then where i don't have any hairs i.e there and less hairs there you go back and forth slightly and then brush out but where you do have hairs up and it's super subtle but look at the difference one eyebrow done one eyebrow not done i would never have my eyebrows microbladed again well, unless I can get a witness to Sam, who does Sam and Nick Chapman. But this is so easy. I'm kind of not really bothered about ever having them done again. These products are so good. Charlotte Tilbury's Legendary Brows is really good. Um, Urban Decay and Too Faced both do really nice ones. I love this. This is the high street equivalent. So again, start at the inner side and I love to brush up there. And then I go up on the arch and down back and forth, back and forth, because there are no hairs there, and then back in and just brush through. I mean, I don't want super fashionable brows, I just want them to define my face properly. There you go. So easy. I'm so lazy, I want it to be super quick, super easy, I really do. Now, at this point, I could just put on some eyeliner and mascara, and I will do that and then show you how to build it up if you need it. But a lot of people don't want a heavy eyeshadow look when it's super hot. So what I've got here is I've got, uh, let's have a look. I've got my eye pencil in Costa Riche um, for MAC. And then what you do is you go, and it's so funny. I was, I'm going to bring this forward here so you can see this properly. It was so funny when I was doing this with Dom and he was watching me do it. And he said, you do realize you're closing your eyes, right? But you've got to get in under the waterline here. So I like to go in under the waterline, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And I know that looks a mess at the moment, but obviously I have a hint and tip after that as well. Let's do the other side as well. And Dom says you can do that as well. So you can pull your eye, but let me just show you what it looks like. I just have to look away because otherwise you've got the pencil coming in your eye. You see what I mean? Anyway, that's known as tight lining. And then you go really quickly in the base of the lashes and then out again at the side. And again on this side in the base of the lashes. And out. You know, I'm not a makeup artist, I'm just showing you how I do it. Which is basically imitating things I've learned from makeup artists over the years. Now I know that looks completely amateurish and not perfect at all, but I have a tip to make it look better. And anybody that's ever watched my makeup um, tutorials knows this. I get a NARS smudging brush, and then traditionally I would have used Bobbi Brown Black Plum, but it's been discontinued, so I'm now using Bobbi Brown Charcoal, and I just dap the brush in the top. It's a completely matte, dark brown shade. And then essentially what you do is I have to pull my eye out because obviously I've got wrinkles and lines, and you never see a tutorial done on a wrinkly eye, do you? or a wrinkly lip. It's always somebody with totally brilliant, perfect lips and perfect tight skin on their eyes. Anyway, so you open the eye up like that and then you go in with the brush back and forth. And this little smudgy brush is just, it makes everything idiot proof. And you come back the other way to make sure there are no gaps in there. And that's your eyeliner done. 
It's so easy to do, it really is. And you can just put mascara on and you're ready to go. And nothing will transfer and it sets the eyeliner and it just makes everything idiot proof, it really does. And that little smudgy line, is it is smudgy, it's not, it's not a perfect cat's flick or anything like that because I haven't got time for that. So I'm gonna go in and do the other eye. It's such a clever way to set, and I can't even remember who taught me to do it, but it's such a clever way to set an eyeliner, but also to make an eyeliner look a little bit rock and roll, but like still professional. And eyeliner is so important for my eyes. I've got really small, not very well defined eyes. So for me, it's important. And then I would go in with the mascara. However, because I am conscious of the fact that I've got hooded lids and that they are getting lower as I get older, I tend to want to push them back and I push them back with a absolutely classic matte shadow here look this is a really old bobby brown when they did them in the circles in nude and this one is birch and so what i do is i get a, a larger sort of slightly sort of fluffy brush like that dab it in really quickly tap it out and then the only place it needs to go really is in there right in there and what it does is it basically just creates the illusion of a shadow and it pushes back that sort of overhanging hood of skin. Oh, deep joy. Now, obviously, there are some people that have hooded eyes when they're younger. Jennifer Lawrence, for example, has the most beautiful hooded eyes. Sam Chapman has hooded eyes. And these are some of the techniques I've, I've learned, learned from her over the years. Hooded eyes aren't necessarily unattractive. It's just as you get older, you tend to have more of a hooded eye because the skin starts to sag and the brow starts to sag. And so, I move inwards rather than outwards because I literally just want to create the illusion of not having a hooded eye. See that one compared to that one? It's super subtle and it takes two seconds and I always want to do it with a matte shadow, but that's what I do. If you start winging it out, you're gonna end up with more of a smoky eye and that's not what I want. Uh, most of the time I don't people want, want people to notice my makeup. I just want them to listen to what I'm saying. Notice my eyes, notice, you know, I don't, I don't want somebody to go, oh, what lovely makeup. That's not what I'm about. So you start here, where the hood is the worst, and you basically just bring it in, and it will naturally flare slightly out to the corner, to that line, but you don't want to take it any further out than where that line went at the edge. And it has to be matte, because if you put sparkle on that skin, you're really going to notice the crepey skin. She's learned over the years. There you go. Super easy, like takes two seconds to do. Yes, at night I do wear sparkle. Yes, at, you know, going out for the evening. Yes, at Christmas, stuff like that. But most of the time I just keep it like that. And then all I'm doing is that's all that's done is define my eyes really. And then mascara. I've got so many on the go at once. This is MAC IDE, which I really like. It's lovely. It's a big chunky brush. Um. And I've been using that quite a lot. But also what I'm really loving is the brand new Max Factor Divine Lashes in Rich Black. Again, a lovely chunky brush because I'm lazy and I don't want to take the time to build them up. And let me show you how this just brings everything together. And this is a little bit like, you know, bearing in mind what I've really put on my face mostly is matte colors to define and sculpt and add a little bit of color. Really the only liquids I put on my face are a creamy lip, a liquid mascara, and a BB cream. Look at that, that's a good mascara, right? Single coat. Let me do the other eye. Now this look works on anybody and everybody and every single face shape and every single age and every single skin tone. You just choose the right colors for you. This is what I call an absolutely timeless I mastered this probably in the early 90s, mid 80s, and I haven't changed it since. The lipstick is start slightly less white and sparkly, but otherwise it's the same. And I only realized that when I dug out some pictures the other day. And I realized that my makeup look has stayed the same for years. As I say, I'm not a makeup artist. I don't really pe want people to notice my makeup. I just want people to pay attention to me and what I'm saying. Oh, look at that, lovely, big splodge. There you go, that shows you I'm not a makeup artist. There you go. So easy to do, so quick. I do this in five minutes every morning, I really do. And then at the moment, I'm really loving those Glossier 
you know, Bobby Brown products that I've done videos about, and I've told you about, I mean, I'm only using them because I love them and I only mention them because I love them. I've got three absolute favorites at the moment. This is Honey by Bobby Brown. It's beautiful, glossy lip. I've got a Glossier one, which is strikingly similar, really beautiful colors. It's taken me a long time to realize I should be going for a brownie glossy lip as well, but not a heavily pigmented one. This is Trench, weird color. Uh, weird name, sorry, great colour. And then I've got two here from um, Code 8, which I'm really, really loving at the moment. And again, a brownie nudie pinks. This is the Colour Brilliance lipstick. Lapisine Wonderlust. But I'm going to put Lapisine on because it's slightly darker and I like it. Beautiful creamy colours. They're all those creamy, easy to wear nudes, but they're highly pigmented and I really like that. There you go. How easy is that? It's so easy. Lighten it up by blending out a BB cream or a CC cream with a concealer, and then you've got to find a translucent powder to set everything. And then I keep, I would actually just keep my makeup super lightweight, little bit of liner set with a powder. Again, setting it with a powder will stop it transfer. A mascara, I don't need waterproof mascaras, but both the IED from MAC and the Divine Lashes from Max Factor come in a waterproof version. And then what I keep to hand throughout the day is that. The, that is the key to setting everything. So basically the blusher has gone directly onto the foundation. So, cause I didn't, powder that area. So that will be linked into that foundation and will stay in place. The lipstick is light, easy to use, easy to apply on the go. You don't need a liner. The mascara is set to stay. I mean, my mascara always is. The liner is set because I put the pencil on and the powder over the top. You don't need the, if you don't have that hooded eye thing, you don't need that. That will set on my eyebrows all day and will not budge. I take that with me and the lipstick all I need. That's how easy it is. It's really, really easy. I think the secret is to blend out your concealer first, and so you need less foundation, but choose a lightweight, really easy, non-occlusive, heavy finish foundation and a translucent powder. If you're thinking about making things last, you put the cream under the powder. So cream, powder, pencil, powder, setting cream this is super long lasting and so are those so is that mascara and then the lipstick you just reapply as and when it's so easy there you go that's how i do my makeup and again apologies at all times for having to see me with no makeup on and to push my and pull my face around especially if you're watching this in widescreen tv i have two codes there's an aborium code that i've mentioned and i've got a code 8 one as well which only runs till the end of june uh, code 8 is Nadine15. Do you know what? All of my codes, if you go onto Instagram, you'll see a highlight that says beauty discount codes. And if you open it up like that, you'll start seeing them come up. And I change them the whole time. Eliza Skin, PSA, Skin, Nadine20, Offaborium, Yes Style, I have a code, Nadine10. Um, let's have a look. Dr. 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 Pimple Popper. And yes, there you go. That's the latest one. Code Nadine15 for 15% off of Code 8 as well. I mean, they're always worth trying, you know, always worth getting in touch with me and going, remind me of that code again. But if you're ever in doubt, go onto my Instagram, find me at Nadine Bag, obviously. At the top in my highlights, you'll see beauty discount codes and they're all up there and they change the whole time. But if you nag me and I go back to the brand, they often reinstate them for you as well. I don't make any money from those discount codes. I'm just saying that. That's that's not how it works. I don't work on affiliate links like that. It's just me giving back to you, sharing the love. Thank you for watching. Thank you for subscribing. Let's take the hair down. Still loving the L'Oreal Steam Pod, by the way. If you want me to do a review of Steam Pod, let me know. God, it's, it works so well. It sort of activates whatever you put on your hair to keep it straighter for longer. Definitely lasts longer than a, a standard straightener. It really does. Thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing and I'll see you soon.